Hey, what do you say there, Barrel Ass? I'm Johnny Brennan, and this is my gear story, AKA Frank Rizzo. This here is a Ramirez, very popular acoustic guitar maker in uh, Madrid, Spain. And I didn't find that out until recently, very recently. The guitar has been away from me for decades, you know, trying to get cleaned up and fixed. And But before that, it was, it was a crazy deal. My kid brother, everybody out there knows him as Muffin Ass. And he is the original, you know, that's where Muffin Ass, the term, comes from. So many years ago, he was a kid, and he was helping some family friends move. And um, I think this is how they pay, I, well, I don't think, I know, this is one of the ways they paid him. Um, so they gave him this guitar, and you know, back in the day, we're just thinking, we gotta smash this fucker as, as soon as we can. So, you know, we're, we're a bunch of brothers, you know, hanging out in uh, our house in uh, Salisbury Mills, New York. And we're getting ready to, uh, just like a bunch of clowns, you know, back then, I, this I believe is 88. My brother was still just a little, uh, little piss ant. Uh, uh. So anyway, I said, Jay, and he, cause he was a huge fan of uh, WWF. He loved wrestling. He used to love Ivan Putski. We had a dog, uh, Bingo. And this dog was the most vicious dog you ever saw. He was just a mutt. And my brother Jason at the time was, I think, only like four or five years old. And he'd jump off the kitchen table with this lock in his hands. And he'd clobber the freaking dog off the head. And he'd, he'd be doing Ivan Putski. So anyway, long story short, we, we, we got ready. We went into my mom's and dad's bedroom because it had a big bed and it was a lot of room. And we could really f each other up. And Jason, whose guitar this was, he's 13 years younger than me. So anyway, he goes and gets the guitar. We get the cameras all ready. And um, I'm just getting ready on, 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 you know, to, on the bed, and I'm gonna take this guitar and I'm just gonna unload the thing on, on my brother Jason. So um, he hands me the guitar, and you know, by then I've, I've been playing the guitar, um, I would say probably 10 years. So he hands me the guitar, and you know, to me, I'm just looking quick, and it looks like one of those guitars you get, and you, you know, $30 guitar, and you, you just start to learn how to play on it. But anyway, as he handed it to me, I'm looking at it saying, wow, and I felt the neck. And as I felt the neck, I said, my God, that, that's, that feels amazing. And I, I, then I, I just went and I played an E minor on it. And I just remember, now this is, a lot of shit happened to the guitar since then. But when I played that E minor, I just was like, holy shit. It was just sounded so beautiful. So then I just said, Jay, we're not gonna, we're not wrecking this guitar. We're not gonna smash this guitar until I can find out more about it. Look at that guitar. I don't know how good you guys can see it, but just with the matchbook, you know, I mean, and th that's when I started looking and say, wait a minute, man. And we, I was saying, we're gonna, we're just gonna destroy this thing. And um, the neck is incredible. The neck, everything about this thing is incredible. And it wasn't until years later, um, might have, might have even been, I'd say maybe eight years ago. Uh, maybe maybe 10 years ago, I had this, I didn't even look inside the Ramirez label, um, and I had sent it out to get just fixed up, um, fix the head and fix certain things, uh, and just make it playable. And that was a long time ago. Uh, that was on my 40th birthday, I got it back. So 2001, I got it back, and um, still paid no attention. But then I looked years later and I said, Ramirez. And I, I said, wait a minute. I, and I, I even saw the whole stamp inside. And I just said, man, this is incredible. So I did some research. And it turns out this is a very, very expensive guitar. And from what I understand, it was made by students. Or a student made it in the Ramirez factory in uh, Madrid, Spain. So I was told that this guitar is worth you know, a lot of money, a lot of money. And um, so I'm glad at the end of the day that I, I didn't use it as a, like a battering ram, uh, you know, and, and smash my brothers to pieces with the damn thing. I think it was only for the grace of God that I, I, I gave it a double look. Because back in, the, back in those days, I mean, you know, this is the late 80s, who gives a You hand me a guitar, I'm gonna bust the thing, you know? I'm just now getting back into playing again. And it feels really good. Um, it's a little scary. You know, after all these years of t time off, you're, you're, you know, your hands, you're, you're wondering, you know, can you still do this? Can you still do that? And so it's a learning process, but you know, it's all part of life, you know? You, you, you get back in, you have some fun, and, um, and that's what I'm doing right now, and I'm looking forward to it. So there you go. So once again, I'm Johnny Brennan. That's my gear story, and I'm sticking to it, you sons of bitches. Frank Rizzo.